So there's several tricks to writing CSS that will work in every browser at the same time, every kind of device, every use case, every size screen. One of them is to understand what kinds of obstacles you might have, what browsers support which properties or which values to which CSS properties. Having that information can help you figure out exactly how to best write your code. So let's look at some resources to find out where what's going on with these properties, what's supported, what's not supported. Of course, one that is super popular in our industry and very common is can I use? So here I am at caniuse.com, and I've typed into the search here, can I use border radius? Let's look this up. Uh, it looks pretty good. This darker green means it's supported. Uh, oh, but look, it's not supported in upper mini, so it's not 100%. And you can look up here in this upper right-hand corner where it says global uh, in July of 2017, it's 94.58%. So it's not 100%, even though border radius has been out for quite a long time, over 10 years, well over 10 years now. Sometimes I think people think that they can't use a property until it's supported in 100% of all browsers but it's kind of rare for things to be supported 100% in old browsers. It's really only CSS that's 15 or 20 years old that's everywhere. There's lots of times when you're using a property that isn't in every browser. So here's an example, right? But let's also look at, um, here we can click show all and it will show us more browsers because those browsers that were visible are not the only ones. There's a bunch of others, the QQ browser, the Badu browser, the Samsung internet browser, the UC browser for Android. Um, you want to pay attention to some of these others too. And it goes further back in time. So we can see that while IE 10 and 11 is supported, IE 6, 7, and 8 is not supported. Um, so maybe you have, you know, you want to think through what's going to happen in these browsers. We can also click down here where there are these tabs and we can see a list of issues. What kinds of bugs maybe did, does this property have? And we could click on these uh, links and go find out more information about bugs and things. Uh, also, we can go to resources, which will take us a shortcut to the specification where this property was defined, um, some other kinds of helpful resources that perhaps are things that people recommend checking out, more information to find out more about how this is going to work. Let's look here. You can see that there's a usage relative and a date relative way to look at this. Right now we're with currently aligned, and you can see it's just kind of every browser is a box. Uh, and they're, they seem to each have like the same amount of, of weight as each other, the same amount of importance to each other. But we can click on usage relative, and now the boxes change size. So the ones, the browsers that have a lot of market share have big boxes, and the browsers that have not very much market share have tiny boxes. Like here, you can see IE, I guess it's IE8. Uh, hardly anybody is using IE8 anymore. Globally, it's at 0.32%. Where Opera Mini, perhaps your company, you talk a lot about IE, actually IE is, in, is being used by fewer and fewer and fewer people. And there's other browsers that are way more popular that are important to think about. In this case, Opera Mini, it's a 3%. So if you're gonna worry about somebody not supporting border radius, I'd worry about Opera Mini. Usage relative can really help frame the perspective on what's important. Also here, date relative can be very interesting. You can kind of look at when did it land in browsers, uh, and how long has it been? We can look over here at something like grid layout and let's look at the date relative. We can see that it was basically n in no browsers and then suddenly it's in a whole bunch of browsers. Um, well, what happened? Oh, that's March 2017 when all these browsers shipped it kind of all at the same time. Um, it can be a good way, especially if you're trying to do research on, on a property and understand when it arrived. Date, date relative can be fun. The other thing is, uh, these numbers, I've been throwing out these numbers, like the 94%, or if we go over to grid, let's look at the, the page for CSS grid layout, we can see that there are quite a few browsers that don't have it, like the Samsung Internet Browser and the UC Browser. Um, so globally, it's at 70% if you include the old versions that are in IE and Edge, the prefixed versions, or if you don't, it's at 65%. But that doesn't mean that 65% of your users have it. That means 65% of all people on the internet everywhere. But maybe your project isn't for the entire globe equally. Maybe it's more focused in a particular region, in particular countries. Uh, so you can go under here, under settings, and you can change what's going on here. You can say, oh, I want to look at the stats for France. 
Um, our, our site's very popular in France, so let's look at the stats according to, to France. And you can see how they might be different. Um, or, or type in your country, type in the countries where your site is being uh, used. You can also, if you're using Google Analytics, you can hook up your company's or your project's personal Google Analytics, and then all the stats that you see will all be, and the usage relative stats will all be from Google Analytics, which is pretty great. Then you can stick, take screenshots and put it into presentations maybe that you're giving to your client or your stakeholders or your bosses or something. You can also go down here and you can see, uh, you can turn on more browsers or hide more of these browsers from some of the original, some of the views that you get. Um, you can also switch the colors where it says accessible colors. There's a lot going on in Can I Use. I think many of us just go to the each page quickly, look at it and leave, and we don't realize that all these superpowers are here to really help us have a a clear picture of how many users have a property or not. Um, all of these percents though, whether you're focused on one country or you're focused on the global market, they may or may not actually be completely accurate. This data is coming from StatsCounter. Um, there is no official perfect data where we sort of know the entire internet. The data is coming from somebody, some company that's collecting that data. Uh, Kenny Use uses StatsCounter. It maybe is the best, the closest that we have to knowing what's going on with the with the world, but it's it's not completely perfect. Like I said, your own Google Analytics are going to be more accurate for you, but uh, if you want to know what's going on globally, StatsCounter is is where that data is coming from. So Kenny Use has a tremendous amount of information, but it doesn't have all the detail that sometimes we need. There are many properties where the property as a whole has been supported, is supported by browsers, but maybe there's a new thing. Maybe there's a couple new values that are being added to that spec, and those are not fully supported. So sometimes Kenny Use says like, oh, everything about writing modes is supported, but oh, sideways text, um, text orientation sideways, or writing mode sideways, LR, writing mode sideways, RL, isn't fully supported but there's no detail in Can I Use about that. So a good place to go when you need more detail is MDN. MDN Web Docs has, uh, you can look at a particular page for a particular property or a particular value. In this case, I'm not looking at all of grid, I'm looking at grid template rows. Grid template rows, how well supported are you? And I can come down here to browser compatibility. I can see this little chart. It's not as pretty as can I use, but it will give us the information and we can see which browser um, versions it is that supports a feature. Uh, super helpful, kind of detailed, but sometimes you really need that kind of detail. The other thing is that many different browser makers themselves have websites where you can look up properties, not only what is supported perhaps in their browsers already, but see the roadmap for what it is that they're working on next, what it is that they just ship. So let's take a look at the one for Chrome. You know, we can see here, look at just the CSS properties, and you can see here I've opened up the one for exclusions. Uh, CSS exclusions, what's up with that? Are people thinking about it? You can dig into it if you want. Um, I know the Microsoft, the team at Microsoft working on Microsoft Edge has worked pretty hard to keep their platform status up to date and to constantly have information here about what's going on. For example, if you want to know what's happening with Grid, it's prefixed in Edge and IE. That's the original version of the specification. Grid update has just recently gone from in progress to preview. It's now, they think, mostly done, and it's uh, in the preview version of Microsoft Edge. Here's a place I can find that out. That's not on Can I Use, but it's here for you to look up. Uh, there's a WebKit status page uh, where we can also look up CSS features. Um, and find out what's being considered, what's being worked on. Um, Firefox, uh, Mozilla, we have a Firefox platform status page. Same thing, we can look up CSS. What CSS properties are being worked on next? Uh, which ones landed most recently? Uh, I don't know that everything is here. I feel like I have in the back of my mind things that I know are being worked on that I don't see on this list. But on, and with any of these uh, websites, you could always dig further into the uh, bug ticket world for any of these vendors. In this case, you could go to Bugzilla for Mozilla and look up anything if you want to really go down a rabbit hole and find out what's going on with a very particular thing. See whether or not a bug has been filed. Maybe there's a bug in the browser. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. But there's the main thing is to check out Can I Use, dig into it, reach for some of the superpowers, and look up these properties and see whether or not they're supported.